Moses Law said, well, when caught in adultery, should be stoned. But a person caught in adultery should be stoned to death. Yeah, they were living under Roman rule, so they did not have the authority to exercise capital punishment. So they've got Jesus in this trick, because if he says, well, kill her, they take him to the Romans. If he says, don't kill her, then they get everybody to say, oh, he doesn't care about the law of Moses. And Jesus, in this moment, looks down and forgets about all this stuff and looks down at this woman who is broken and hurting and has been thrown at the feet of Jesus. And there is no better place, my friend, if you feel broken than to be thrown at the feet of Jesus. And he looks down and he looks at those people and in my imagination, and this is my imagination, he kneels down on that cold, hard ground and he picks up a rock. And I don't see him do that. Not yet. I see him starting to start to write. Tradition, some traditions say that what he wrote was the sins of those who accused him. And they start pushing, well, Jesus, what should we do? What should we do? What should we do? And he picks up, a, in my mind, he picks up a rock and he looks him in the eye and he says, here, whoever's without sin, cast the first stone. <coughs> looks back down at the writing and continues to write. They look down to see what he's writing and realize that it's their life exposed. Hypocrite. Jealous. Backstabbing. Lustful. And they start slipping out. Oh, I think I left my iron out of the house. <laughs> <laughs> Until no one's left. Except Jesus and the woman, and I, in my mind, he takes his hand and wipes the dust away. He looks at her and says, I don't condemn you. Go. Sin no more. Live a new life. Three times Jesus writes. The standard, the judgment, and the mercy. The hand appears during that Christmas party and starts writing on the wall. Verse 5. The king himself saw the hand as it wrote, and his face turned pale with fright. His knees knocked together in fear, and his legs gave way beneath him. The literal translation of that phrase is the loins, the joints of his loins were loosened. <laughs> the joints of his loins were loosened. <laughs> He made a mess. <laughs> I don't know the actual, but you know, you get the picture. This guy is completely freaked out. Face goes white, falls down into the chair. Okay, then let's get historical context. They're having a party. And they're not just having a party like your Christmas party. They're having a party. <laughs> they are passing around substances to increase your mental sensations. Those have begun to work. So there is a heightened awareness of everything in a unique and special way. So when the handwriting goes on the wall, <laughs> they're freaking. <laughs> and somehow they know the hand is writing. This is a judgment of God. And it's right there under the lampstand, near the lampstand, where everybody can see it. Verse 7, the king shouted for the enchanters, astrologers, and fortune tellers to be brought before him. He said to these wives, he's yelling, give me some people who can help me now. And he says, look, tell me what it is, and I'm going to promote you to the third in the kingdom. I'm going to give you a lot of riches. Of course, he was only the second kingdom, so he can only promote them to the third in the kingdom. He's having a massive hissy fit. Verse 8, when all the king's wise men come, came, come, had come in, none of them could read the writing or tell them what it meant. So the king grew even more alarmed, and his face turned pale. His nobles, too, were shaken. They are now all thoroughly freaked out. <laughs> Possibly they could read it. The words were not uncommon. They were written probably in the tradition of the day without any uh, vowels and probably without any spacing, so there's more than one way that you can interpret these words, and then what they meant was even more confusing. So these guys are like, we're not touching this with a 10-foot pole. That guy's on the loop. We don't have a clue what it is. If we say something that's wrong, it's going to be our heads. We have no clue. And in fact, it's pretty freaky because it's on the wall. <laughs> I don't think you really underestimate it. You've heard this story over and over. It may have kind of, you know, oh yeah, there's handwriting on the wall. There was like stuff that appeared on the wall. And it's not like they had a video projector. It just appeared on the wall. That will freak you out a smidgen. So now they're all freaked out. The nobles are freaked out. Bill Shatter's freaked out. Everybody's freaked out. Enter the Queen Mother. This is Nebuchadnezzar's wife. Nabonidus' mommy, Bill Shazer's grandma. She's trying to get some sleep down the hall in this party, but driving her nuts all night. <laughs> Suddenly, the 
the sound changes and it starts to become panic and screaming and crying and people freaking out. <laughs> now she really can't get any sleep. Finally, she sends one of her people because there was no way she was going to this party. There was no way Grandma was showing up at this game. So she said, so you go find out what's going on down there. I ain't going walking anywhere close to that thing. Come back and tell her what's going on. And she's like, fine. She gets up. I see her as one of those, one of those powerful grandmas. Well, grandmas don't take no noise. Don't take no mess. She got some conviction in her. I fine. She starts walking down there. She storms into that room where everybody's still freaking out. She's like, you all a mess. Why don't somebody shut up in here? Walks up to the queen, verse 10. Heard the banquet hall. Long live the king, because that's what you said if you didn't want your head chopped off. Don't be so pale and frightened. Put on your big boy panties. There's a man in your kingdom who has within him the spirit of the holy gods. During Nebuchadnezzar's reign, this man was found to have inside understanding and wisdom like that of the gods. Your predecessor, the king, your predecessor, King Nebuchadnezzar, made him chief over all the magicians. She's just stabbing it. Look, you know this. What's wrong with you? You're too good? You think all you little gods are going to help you? Go to the guy who talks to the god. Go get Daniel. Oh, yeah. I'm probably going to get the game to do It's a good plan. <laughs> Verse 13, so Daniel was brought in before the king. The king asked him, are you Daniel? One of the exiles brought from Judah by my predecessor, King Nebuchadnezzar. I've heard that you have the spirit of the gods within you and that you're filled with insight and understanding and wisdom. My wise men in the chambers have tried to read the words on the wall and tell me their meaning, but cannot do it. I am told that you can give interpretation and solve difficult problems. If you can read these words and tell me their meaning, you'll be clothed in purple robes of royal honor, you'll be given a gold chain placed around your neck, you become the third highest ruler of the kingdom. Really? Because <laughs> those words are words of judgment already. You've probably pretty much figured that out. You know there's an army coming for you. And you think Daniel really wants your raise? Wants your promotion? Wants to be, you know, right up next to the king, buddy? <laughs> World's coming to an end, and what does he revert to? Money and power. Because that's what you got. That's the only thing you have to control people. Money and power. Daniel, however, answered the king, keep your gifts or give them to someone else, but I'll tell you what the writing means. Interestingly enough, if you read the word, remember last chapter, how, how the king Nebuchadnezzar, when he wrote that chapter, uh, keeps using a different name, Belshazzar, for Daniel. Now we have Belshazzar. Do you see a connection between the two? So we talked about the first weekend when they changed their names, when they came to Babylon, were taken captive, brought to Babylon, they changed their names to reflect their gods. It appears that the Hebrew writers, uh, when they wrote the book of Daniel, or Daniel, when he wrote it, and, and those that followed, they took the names and, and twisted them just a little bit because they didn't want to give honor to the Babylonian gods. It seems most likely that Daniel's name and Bilshazzar's name are exactly the same. Bilshazzar and Bilshazzar. Hmm. Bilshazzar Daniel, Bilshazzar the freaked out king. Hmm. 